Hi folks, Johnny B here, a digital tutor in the world of Web3 and Smart Tech. Today, we are going to talk about the concept of DPIN or Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Network. More specifically, we will look at how it's often built incorrectly. I'm going to name a few of red flags, which are worth paying attention to, and show you the best practices to follow. Untrusted devices. First, the quality of the infrastructure devices themselves is very important. The value of resources and data from untested devices, or devices not designed for their tasks, will be low. It's important to use devices designed for specific purposes with an open component base and that have undergone field testing. No pin, in to pin. Devices need to connect to the decentralized cloud, and for this purpose, there are intermediate components called connectivity. If these components are implemented using old Web 2 standards, it's a red flag. For example, if it's impossible to deploy connectivity on your own, or if it requires complex network reworking. Even worse is when the component exists in a single instance and only developers have access to it. Proper connectivity in DPIN should have open source code and good documentation explaining its operation. This is important so that any network participant can deploy it independently. Use of corporate clouds. Another red flag for DPIN is if corporate cloud is used when working with device data. The handling of data should occur exclusively using Web3 Cloud, whose decentralized functions have been clearly demonstrated. No verification. If a DPIN project doesn't have mechanisms for verifying device actions and data, this creates a loophole for manipulation. For example, Distributing tokens for the work of sensors without verification can lead to scammers massively emulating the devices. Any device activity must be verified, and this process should be described in detail. The network, in turn, should encourage stress tests to identify potential fraud schemes. Developers can also choose to collaborate with other networks that will take on verification. Poorly designed tokenization of resources. Often, DPIN infrastructure resources are tokenized, turning into assets that can be transferred, sold, or used. However, if this process is poorly designed, the value of assets will be doubtful. For example, tokenizing access to sensor data will be pointless if that data is easily accessible to third parties. Moreover, not all resources provided by the infrastructure actually have value. Raw. Unverified data is unlikely to be a valuable asset. Tokenization must be carefully described, its technical implementation must be tested, and the resources and data turned into assets must have proven utility. Mindless token incentivization. In DPIN projects, you can find token incentivizations for network development, such as distributing tokens for simply connecting a device to the network. This helps expand it, but mindless distribution of free tokens leads to network uncontrolled growth, attracting scammers, and ultimately to collapse. Any token incentivization for network expansion must be well thought out with verification of the useful work of participants. Failure to comply with these largely fundamental principles of Web3 and decentralized techs will result in the project calling itself to pin either collapsing or moving to a completely different model, deceiving the expectations of its participants. But, despite all these problems, DPIN can be a cool tool for security, transparency, and device management. Just be careful, pay attention to the technical details, and keep an eye on the real DPIN projects. Well, that's it. I'm wrapping up. Bye-bye.